Terraria has a big problem, and it's one that Minecraft has managed to avoid since the very start. And while Terraria was intentionally created in a way that resulted in this issue, Minecraft was made with a very different and more profitable idea in mind. However, many Minecraft players are actually demanding that their game follow the same fate as Terraria, missing entirely how this one thing has made Minecraft so successful. So what is this one problem that holds Terraria back? Well, before I reveal that, let's first address several of the common reasons people give for Minecraft performing better than Terraria, and I promise you that the problem Terraria has isn't what you think. Before we start, a little housekeeping. I am a Terraria YouTuber who has played the game for about a decade, while I've played Minecraft for only a couple years. I find that Terraria is a far superior game and enjoy it much more than Minecraft. Frankly, I find Minecraft to be rather boring, and you can let me know how you feel about that in the comments below. I'll just tell you I enjoy Terraria more because I have more refined tastes. <coughs> Moving on, the two games were also designed entirely differently from each other. In their early days, they were quite similar, leading many to calling Terraria 2D Minecraft, but over the years, the two have found their own identities. But as Terraria found its identity, I think it fell into a problem that Minecraft never did. These are, of course, two very popular games, with Minecraft only being the most popular game of all time, and you can enjoy both or only one, whatever you like. But for the purpose of today's video, we'll be trying to figure out why it is that Minecraft has performed so much better than Terraria. One common explanation that is given for Minecraft's success over Terraria is its expansive world. Many Minecraft players claim that Terraria's limited and comparatively small world sizes make it less fun, since in Minecraft the world is, for all intents and purposes, infinite. This means that you can have large gaps of separation between different builds, or that you can create absolutely gargantuan builds all around the world. This also means there is always something to explore, as the procedurally generated terrain gives rise to interesting locations and sites to see. Terraria, meanwhile, has three world sizes, and you can explore the entirety of the surface of even the largest size world in short order. You might say that there is plenty of underground to explore, but unless you're in one of the game's main major tunnels, there likely isn't a whole lot there. And Terraria's confined tunnels that require copious amounts of mining is vastly different than Minecraft's massive, open, and interconnected tunnels that can span entire mountain ranges. Granted, this was from a more recent update, and until that came, it could have easily been argued that underground exploration in Minecraft wasn't any more interesting than it was in Terraria. However, there are things about Terraria's worlds that work in its favor. For one, it is very easy for you to get from place to place without needing to travel for several minutes or even hours, and you don't need to set up massive infrastructure just so you can travel from point A to point B. In Minecraft, you have several options for travel, including ice boats, horses, railways, nether highways, or elytra, and I'm sure that there's others that I'm missing. But if we're honest, there's only maybe three of those that are commonly used after the first 10 minutes. Terraria, on the other hand, allows you to get wherever you want in a relatively short amount of time, even if you're on foot with no gear that boosts your speed. But once you do get gear, you can move faster with grappling hooks, cloud in a bottle or its variants, Hermes boots, teleporters, pylons, or even hoiks if that's your fancy. The more you explore in Terraria, the faster your character will naturally become, and pylons can be set up with ease after a little googling. Minecraft, in the meantime, requires you to grind out massive quantities of materials and go on hour-long mining sessions to make even a short highway. So is the world size that big of a deal for most people? It certainly is for some, but I'd argue that even with Minecraft World's expansive size, it makes little difference in the end. Most people, from what I've seen, only stay in a very small portion of the potential map when they play and only venture out when they've stripped their neighborhood of its resources, or when they want to start over again in the same world. Admittedly, Minecraft worlds can have more sentimental value because of how much time you have to put into them, and how much time you have to put into doing just about anything, while Terraria worlds are a dime a dozen and are typically discarded once a run is over. That's not to say people can't be sentimental for their Terraria worlds, just that the game's design does not foster that nearly as much as it does in Minecraft. So if it's not the massive world size, then what is it? Well, plenty of others argue that Terraria is missing an entire dimension. And I'm not talking about the Nether or the End dimension. Rather, Minecraft is of course a 3D game, while Terraria is a 2D game. This, I find, is one of the most common explanations people have for why Minecraft is better than Terraria. But I think it's wrong. Could it? <laughs> Could it be one of the reasons why Minecraft succeeds more than Terraria? There's definitely a good argument to be had, but I don't think it's the primary reason. 
The third dimension does definitely open many doors up for Minecraft, and it's a good match for its massive world size. If Terraria had worlds just as big as Minecraft, it wouldn't feel right since you can only move to the left or the right, while having a massive world in a 3D game feels normal because we live in the third dimension and that's how the world feels to us. This extra dimension means build can be a bit more intriguing. Building in the two games, although there is a certain level of overlap, is also very different. The extra dimension leads you to needing to consider space and volume rather than the area of a certain build. There's also a certain level of scope that only the third dimension can give you. A mountain in Minecraft is much more impressive than any mountain could ever be in Terraria. In Terraria, all that happens is that you come across a large hill and you can see only so much of it, while in Minecraft you see the whole scope of the mountain's peak and the surrounding valleys. You feel its massive size and feel small in comparison. It's rather hard to have environments that take your breath away in Terraria just because there is only so much you can work with. Certain mods can impress you with creating beautiful environments you've never seen before, but we're going to focus on the vanilla game since the modding community is quite large for both games, and there's simply too many mods changing too many things about the vanilla experiences for us to really comprehensively talk about them. And, well, most people only ever deal with the vanilla experience of both games. Modded communities tend to be much smaller. Now another point that ties in with the third dimension is the human aspect. This is sort of a point on its own and sort of a sub-point of the previous one. The third dimension means that you are viewing the world from a first person's perspective, while in Terraria you view your avatar and everything else that's on the screen. That makes Minecraft feel more personal than Terraria. While you're playing with other people in Minecraft, this added dimension creates another level of interaction, and while I find it hard to explain in words, I think it's easy enough to understand intuitively that interacting with a person in the first point of view is very different than doing so in the second dimension. This even helps Minecraft content creators since the movement of their camera, what they're looking at, and how they move add to the personality of the person. There's also the fact that the viewer is placed into the perspective of the creator, while in Terraria the viewers are only looking at an avatar as the creator does a voiceover. Maybe some psychology channel can talk about something as absurd as this, the psychology of watching a Minecraft and Terraria video. The fact that you can't see your own face while in Minecraft or the face of the creator as they're playing the game allows you to imagine like you or the creator are the ones talking. While in Terraria, it's much more clear that you're narrating over a character, but I'm getting off track. Now I've talked about some of the advantages that Minecraft has over Terraria, but Terraria has advantages over Minecraft. In spite of these advantages, Terraria couldn't keep up with Minecraft's success, so let's talk about a few of its advantages before I reveal its one core game function that I believe has held it back from the same success as Minecraft. One leg up Terraria has over Minecraft is difficulty. Terraria has four different game modes, with both games having what amounts to a creative mode, then they also both have a core intended difficulty, and then Terraria has a difficulty called medium core, which amounts to losing all your stuff like in Minecraft, and they also both have hardcore. Terraria gets a little complex in how its difficulty functions from there on, since there are three difficulty options when you're choosing a world, classic, expert, and master mode. The difficulty the player is set on is what I mentioned before, with journey mode amounting to what is creative mode for Minecraft players, classic, which makes it so you only lose coins when you die, medium core, which is basically like Minecraft, and hardcore. And all that ignores special difficulties that come from special seeds. These are a little more niche, but it's not modded and thus is part of the base game. There is the legendary difficulty, which seeks to destroy your will to live. Before that, there was the For the Worthy Seed, which is still pretty difficult, though legendary mode has overtaken it. There are other special seeds that make the game harder in their own right, but none of them come to the same level as legendary seed. Now, Terraria can become easy if you use certain exploits or have played the game enough to be good, or else you take advantage of every possible mechanic to give yourself a competitive edge, but let's be honest, not everybody does that. When it comes to Minecraft, it doesn't take all that much time to get good at it, and there isn't much you really need to get good at, because there isn't all that much that is really a threat to you in Minecraft. Terraria, meanwhile, has a long list of bosses and enemies that you'll encounter, some of which are terrifying to run into at certain points in progression. In Minecraft, you can get maxed out pretty quickly, and none of the enemies are all that difficult. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but I can pretty confidently say that Hardcore Terraria is much harder than Hardcore Minecraft. 
but I won't be getting into why Terraria Hardcore is so much more difficult. I think that all that really needs to be said is that I, a guy who barely understands basic crafting in Minecraft, am able to make a fair amount of progress in Hardcore in the game, while in Terraria, it can be incredibly difficult to just get past the first boss until you have some practice. One way Terraria has a leg up on Minecraft is its sheer amount of content. Terraria has hundreds of enemies, many more weapons, accessories, items, blocks, ores, and more than Minecraft does. Terraria has 18 mainline bosses, with at least 15 more when including mini-bosses, event bosses, and special legendary seed boss, Mechdusa. This also leaves out enemies such as Wyverns, Mothron, Dread Nautilus, Pirate Captains, Biomimics, Dungeon Guardians, all of which, other than the Guardian, are not dissimilar from mini-bosses themselves. Minecraft, meanwhile, has three bosses, with the dragon being the only mainline one. When it comes to combat as a whole, Terraria is far more expansive than Minecraft could ever dream to be. Minecraft has swords, bows, axes, and shields, and I suppose you could throw in the trident if you wanted. You can use potions, idols of undying, ender pearls, cobwebs, water buckets, and what have you in combat, though most of those you'll only really need when you're doing PvP which is something Minecraft does do better than Terraria. Terraria PvP doesn't quite work, what with how the weapons are meant to destroy demigods and otherworldly powers and aren't exactly balanced against other players. But assuming you're not doing PvP, Terraria has a vast array of guns, magical tomes, wands, minions you can summon to fight for you, and numerous swords, along with plenty of other kinds of weapons. All of these weapon types have many different variants within them, with even your ammunition changing how you use the weapon sometimes. The weapon of your choice changes how you play the game, and the same goes with the accessories and armor you use. Instead of armor just increasing your base defense like it does in Minecraft, Terraria's armor increases other stats and or gives you some sort of special ability. It would take a little while to explain all of this to someone who doesn't play Terraria at all, and it's beyond what we need to discuss for this video. Basically, Terraria has way more different weapons, accessories, and more at your disposal. So now we've discussed some of the common explanations people say Minecraft has become so much more popular than Terraria, and some of the reasons why Terraria is better than Minecraft. I'm sure there are some I missed, but I think I hit the biggest and most common points. Now it's time to reveal that one concept that is the real reason for Minecraft's greater success than Terraria. That one concept, that one piece of intentional game design, is progression. Terraria was made as a game with progression in mind, while Minecraft was not. Let me explain. Terraria as a game is made so that you start as the weakest possible little boy, and by the end of the game, you're an all-conquering destroyer of worlds. There is a gradual sense of you increasing in power as you explore and defeat enemies. A rare drop can give you a sudden leg up, Good loot or bad loot in chests can alter your course and capabilities in-game. As you progress, the game gives you hints as to what you should do next, though you are largely allowed to do things in whatever order you want, with certain bosses unlocking different stages of progression. I could go on and on about how Terraria's progression is perfection, but there are other videos that do that. In the end, I just want to focus on the fact that Terraria was made with progression as a core mechanic of gameplay. This means you play the game, beat the final boss, and then you're faced with the question of, now what? Many, if not most people at this point, take down the final boss Moonlord, and then perhaps fiddle around a little bit with the endgame features, and then leave the world and character never to return. Of course, there are people who do take their time on the worlds, going through it slowly and casually, enjoying the sandbox features. I'm even doing a year-long run, but I'm doing that because I realize that I've been blasting through the game, finishing it and then ending it over and over, and it got a little old. I have found that slowing down has dramatically increased my enjoyment of the game and part of the reason for the slow run is to encourage others to do so as well, but that's simply not how most people play the game. Now of course all kinds of people play the game in all kinds of different ways and presumably enjoy however they choose to play it. What of Minecraft then? It has a final boss, right? So once you beat the Ender Dragon, Minecraft players should be faced with the same question. Now what? Well, that's simply not the case. In fact, from what I've observed, it seems like most people either beat the dragon quickly, gather all the best loot, and then start getting busy with their worlds, or else they slowly roam around casually doing random things, and may or may not even get to the dragon. The Minecrafter has no sense of urgency when it comes to taking down the Ender Dragon, because there is no particular need to do so. If they want the Elytra, then they can go and kill the thing, and doing so takes very little effort, but other than that, there is little reason to fight the boss. 
So, what does this all mean? Well, I'd like to posit the theory that Minecraft succeeds over Terraria because there is no points in playing Minecraft. By that I mean, when you open up Terraria, you have a set goal in mind, take down the final boss Moonlord. When you open up Minecraft, the point of playing the game is whatever you set your mind to. There is nothing the game is pointing you towards or urging you to do. It's much more focused on the sandbox where your imagination really is the limit. Now I personally find this quite boring and feel like the game is little more than a block building simulator and since I'm not very good at building, nor am I interested in the grind to get blocks and then the many hours it would take to build half of the things I would actually want to build, I find the game as a whole rather monotonous. One way this monotony could be relieved is by adding a sense of real meaningful progression in the game. And this is actually something that many people appear to be demanding of Mojang. With every update, there's a discussion online about how Minecraft's updates are becoming smaller and smaller, or perhaps even just less interesting, and how they rarely and barely affect how you play the game. From the videos I've seen of people talking about it, there is definitely a hunger in the community for much larger updates. But I think that doing this would actually slowly kill the game. Sure, it would make longtime fans happy to have something new and fresh, but adding massive updates that dramatically alter the gameplay would lead to the game either having a much longer and defined sense of progression or else becoming overly complicated and bloated, making it harder for new players to casually enjoy it as plenty of others have done in the past. This is why I said at the beginning of the video that many Minecraft fans are actually demanding their favorite game follow in the footsteps of Terraria. Now Terraria is by no means a non-successful game, so adding a greater sense of progression or massive amounts of content could very well help Minecraft, but until or if it happens, we will never know for sure. My hypothesis is that adding these massive updates would either bloat the game or create that dreaded progression that I claim holds Terraria back. Though to be clear, I'd never ask Terraria to change. I love it how it is. I just think it doesn't have nearly the universal appeal that Minecraft apparently has. And if Minecraft did add these massive updates and started becoming more like Terraria, although I might enjoy it, I believe that its popularity would briefly spike, only to then begin its slow fall into obscurity, having lost the identity that made it so popular in the first place. Clearly, the sales numbers tell a story all their own. So to sum up everything, like I were writing some sort of high school persuasive essay, Minecraft and Terraria were made with two different design philosophies, with Terraria choosing to go the routes of a linear line of progression, while Minecraft decided to provide the player with a bigger and bigger sandbox. Because Terraria has a definitive point to it, people finish the game and then decide to move on from it, while Minecraft can survive for as long as you can think of things to do. But people who play the game are actually demanding things of Minecraft that would make it more linear. In the end, you, the person watching this video, are the one who decides which game is better, and we all have our own tastes. But Minecraft is the most popular game of all time, but with Terraria having been, and still to this day, is often called 2D Minecraft, I found it fascinating to consider why it is that Terraria hasn't had the same gargantuan success as Minecraft. But what do you think? Am I correct that progression is the main reason for Minecraft's success? Do you think one of the other reasons that I mentioned actually has a larger impact than progression? Or is there another reason? Would massive updates to Minecraft actually lead to its decline? I'd love to hear your thoughts. But in the end, Terraria is the game that I love and I would choose it any day over Minecraft. Hey guys, I'm actually partnering with Boosteroid. Boosteroid is a service that allows you to play your games over the cloud, allowing you to play some of the latest AAA games on your potato of a PC. You can check the description down below for some more details.